Hello friends and welcome back to another Pokemon how-to guide. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's guide we're going to be looking at all of the methods in Pokemon Sword and Shield with how to EV train your Pokemon. And before we get into the guide today, I will just say if you enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and be sure to leave your comments down below. Let me know if you found this guide useful and what content you would like to see in future. Now before we get into the methods of EV training, let's just take a quick minute to explain what EVs are, what benefits they give your Pokemon and why you have to do this if you are planning on playing competitive Pokemon. For those of you who are already in the know about EVs and have a good understanding of it, I'll leave a timestamp down in the description which will take you straight to all three methods within this EV training guide. EVs or effort values, as they are also known, are hidden values that you can give your Pokemon via a number of different methods to increase its specific stat to increase its overall potential. A Pokemon can have a maximum of 510 EVs distributed throughout all six of its stats, but only a maximum of 252 in one single stat. For an example, if you have a Charizard on level 100 with a timid nature and 31 speed IVs, its raw speed stat will show as 259. Now if you invest the maximum number of speed EVs or effort values in this stat, which are 252, then this Charizard's raw speed stat will increase from 259 to 328 which is Charizard's absolute maximum speed stat without a speed boosting item or move. This method can be applied to any one of a Pokemon's particular stats, but not as mentioned earlier, you cannot exceed the overall amount of 510 EVs per single Pokemon. If you're playing competitive Pokemon though, this is a huge area you need to dedicate some time to. At level 100, the difference between a stat without EVs and one that is fully invested is 63 stat points. And this isn't even including a boosting nature. So that is a big difference and why I say it's a very important area to concentrate on if you are planning on playing competitive Pokemon. Now with the introduction out of the way, the question is how do we EV train our Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield? We are covering three methods in today's guide and to kick us off we will be taking a look at what is probably the most straightforward method of them all. Like many new mechanics we have had introduced within the Sword and Shield titles, Vitamins in Generation 8 have had a massive update on how they work. In previous generations, a trainer could give a Pokemon Vitamins to increase a certain EV, but they were limited to exactly 10 Vitamins per stat, meaning you could only use them up to 100 EVs. After this, you would have to use alternative methods to max out a particular stat's EVs. Now, with the introduction of Sword and Shield, this limit has been completely removed and now we are able to max out a Pokemon's EVs right up to 252 with just vitamins. Now vitamins are an in-game item and they come in six different varieties. You've got the HP up which is self-explanatory, boosts the HP EVs of a Pokemon. You've got protein which is boosting the attack. Iron for the defense, calcium for special attack, zinc for special defense, and then carbos for speed. Each vitamin will increase a Pokemon specific EV by 10. So to maximize a single stats EV, you would need to give 26 items to that specific Pokemon. There are a couple of ways to get the vitamin items in Sword and Shield, but both require purchasing and one is probably a lot easier than the other. We will start by heading to Winden. Once here, head inside the Pokemon Center and at the Pokemon Mart, speak to the NPC character on the right who sells all six vitamin items for 10,000 Poké Dollars each. Now to maximize one stat with vitamins, you will need approximately 26 vitamins for that specific stat. So to maximize a single stat to EVs, it would cost you around 260,000 Poké Dollars. Now to maximize an entire Pokémon's EVs, you're looking at around 520,000 Poké Dollars. And for an entire team of six, you're looking at over 3 million Poké Dollars. Yeah, not cheap. I recently did a guide on how to farm money in Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I will link above this in the right top hand corner now for those of you that do want to farm money. And it's definitely a good way to look at if you want that unlimited supply of cash. 
Now, another place to obtain vitamins is in Hammerlock. Again, once you are here, head inside the Pokemon Center and speak to this NPC that you can see on your screen now. Now, she does sell vitamins, but this time not for Poké Dollars, but for Battle Points. Each vitamin will cost two Battle Points. And although this is a much cheaper way to get vitamins, I think because Battle Points aren't as easy or time efficient to farm in Sword and Shield, it's probably more preferable to use the method of Poké Dollars from Winden like we've just seen. As you can see, I'm using 26 carbos, 26 protein, and 1 HP up to maximize my Dracovish with an EV spread of 4 HP, 252 attack, and 252 speed. So, to do this, what I need to do is maximize the attack stat and maximize the speed stat, and that will leave just enough for me to use the final HP vitamin to put the 4 HP or 6 EVs into HP to maximize its EV stats overall. Once a stat has been maxed out, you can check this on a Pokemon summary stat page by pressing Y when you're on this screen, which will bring up another screen and any one stat with stars around it means it is maxed out in its EVs. So that covers vitamins in Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's a very quick and easy method to EV your Pokemon up, but it is quite costly and it will mean you having to farm money or battle points to do this. I think for as a method to do it for a, a Pokemon that you need very quickly, it's really good. But to do it for team after team after team, it will cost a lot of money and farming all of that money, all those battle points will take a lot of time. Now there are other methods that we will be looking at in this guide and the next one, in particular I think is a way more efficient use of your time with how to EV train your Pokemon. It is the more traditional method which has really no cost compared to the vitamin route and it's by battling or catching other Pokemon to obtain your EVs. Now the majority of Pokemon in the game do give out at least one to two EVs in a specific stat when you catch them or they are defeated in battle. And I know that you're thinking, yes, sounds like a lot. Battling potentially 252 Pokemon just to max out one stat. Um, yeah, I agree. Forget that and pass me those vitamins. But thankfully, there are a few items and additional tricks you can use to really speed this method up and actually make it very quick and efficient. The first items we need to look at are the power items. Once again, you need to head back to Hammerlock and go to the Pokemon Center and speak to the same NPC characters you did before when buying the vitamins. And this NPC character also sells these power items. Now the power items, there are six of them. There is the power bracer, which boosts attack, the power belt for defense, the power lens for special attack, the power band for special defense, the power anklet for speed, and the power weight for HP. The power items cost 10 battle points each, and honestly, let me tell you, these are an essential item for EV in your Pokemon, as well as saving you a lot of time. They will be something you can use for a long time, so this low cost is definitely well worth it. How power items work is when you attach it to one of your Pokemon and that Pokemon gains EVs in the related stat, they will receive an additional 8 EVs with the attached power item. So, if you have a Charizard holding a power antlet and it battles a Lipod, which gives you 2 speed EVs when you defeat it or catch it in battle, the power antlet will actually give you 8 additional EVs, meaning the Charizard will actually receive 10 speed EVs for every Lipod it defeats meaning defeating 26 Lipods with your Charizard would max out its speed EVs to 252. And you can even make this method more efficient if you have a Pokemon with the rare Pokemon disease Pokerus. Now, you may or may not have heard of Pokerus, but it is a random virus that appears in the game. It is very rare. It has a 1 in 28,000 chance of appearing on one of your Pokemon within the game. So an extremely rare virus to get. And if you do get it, you are extremely lucky and you need to utilize it as best you can, especially when it's concerned to EV training. Now, how Pokerus works is that within the first 24 hours to the first four days is when this Pokemon is contagious and it can pass it on to other Pokemon in your party. After this period, it will become dormant and it will not be able to pass on the virus, although it will still keep all the benefits of having that Pokerus to begin with. Now, you might ask, why is Pokerus so good? Well, if a Pokemon has contracted Pokerus, then whenever that Pokemon receives EVs from a wild Pokemon battle or when a Pokemon is caught, or through Pokemon jobs, its EVs that it receives are actually doubled. Meaning if you attach a power item to your Pokemon and it has Pokerus, 
you can gain up to 20 EVs per stat when you defeat or catch a Pokemon. This cuts down the number of Pokemon you would need to encounter to maximize the specific stats EVs to 13, which is actually really, really efficient. Now, Pokerus, as mentioned, is a rare virus and has a 1 in 28,000 chance of appearing in a Pokemon game. And unless you are super lucky, it might be worth talking to friends or fellow players to see if they have it and would be kind enough to pass an infected Pokemon on to you so you can breed it within your team and utilize this virus. Now, once you have a Pokemon with Pokerus, you can spread this to as many of your own Pokemon as you would like by placing it in your party alongside the other Pokemon you want to contract it. And then after you find a battle or a wild encounter, it normally passes this throughout the team. Then what I'll do is place that initial holder back into the box where it can stay viral and able to pass it on in similar future situations. Now, just to make you aware, as you can see on the screen now, the specific Pokemon you are EV training also doesn't have to be the one battling because of the experience in share it means you can use a stronger Pokemon to quickly knock out opposing Pokemon and the rest of your team will still receive the specific EVs for that defeated Pokemon. Technically speaking if you have a team of five Pokemon all holding power items with Pokerus you could train five Pokemon using something like Dracovish that we're using now to just knock out the Pokemon that we're intending to beat. Now for the best areas to EV train your Pokemon, for HP I will always head to Route 2 and use Rookadi. It has a very high spawn chance and it will give you one EV in HP every time you defeat them. So that means with every time you defeat a Rookadi and you have the power item attached with Polkorus, you are going to be gaining 18 EVs each Rookadi. So it does mean that you won't have to be battling too many Rookadi to actually max out your HP EVs. For attack, Persica is a very good option on Route Route 7, it does give you two attack EVs every time you beat one, so that'll be 20 EVs for each Persica you beat. For defense, then I would go to the mine off Route 3. You can battle Car Call here. As you enter the mine, there will always be one on the track, so what you can do is use a method of entering the mine, battling it, and then exiting, and then coming back in and just repeating that process for 13 times because Car Call gives you two defense EVs every time you defeat it, meaning you would only need to beat 13 of them. Repeating this process 13 times is quite straightforward forward to maximize that defense stat. For special attack, I would go for Marcus and it does give you two special attack EVs every time you beat it. It is located on Route 6. Again, quite popular spawn rate, easy enough to find and once you start cycling this 13 times, you'll be able to maximize that special attack EV stat. For special defense, Duskull is probably your best option in the Ghost Tower in the Wild Area and that is located on your screen now. A Duskull will give you one special defense EV every time you defeat it. So you'd need a little bit more of those but it's just like the Rookie D situation with HP. And then for speed, this is a really nice one. Back to Route 7 again and Lipod and Galvantula. They both give you two speed EVs every time you defeat one so it means you will only have to defeat a combination of 13 between the two. So that is the traditional method of EV training. There's a little bit of work prior to starting this method, but once you get it set up and once you have the Pokerus and the power items, it becomes a very easy method and it's very time efficient. It's probably my preferred method, honestly. If I do go out and do EV training, I find it very useful, especially if I've got a bunch of Pokemon that I need to EV in the same stat. And purchasing additional power items, I always feel is very beneficial just for this method. Now, before we move on to the final method of EV training, I feel like it's probably a good opportunity now to talk about how we remove EVs. So you're always gonna find yourself in the situation where you maybe need to change an EV spread on a Pokemon or have made a mistake where placing EVs in a certain stat that you weren't meant to. How are you meant to remove them without breeding a completely new Pokemon, there are actually six specific berries that you can find within the game that reduces stats certain EV by 10. The only issue with finding these berries is they are only located on certain berry trees within the wild area and throughout the game and are only obtainable from each tree once per day. And unlike previous generations in Sword and Shield, it doesn't have a berry field or actually a consistent way for obtaining a large amount of these berries. So that is one issue with these EV reducing berries. But I do have a way actually in this guide that is probably the quickest method I've found to farm these EV reducing berries. And we'll get to that in one moment. But before we do, we'll just discuss what these EV reducing berries are. Now you've got the Pomeg berry, 
the Kelpsy Berry, the Hondu Berry, the Qualup Berry, the Grepper Berry, and the Tomato Berry. The Pomeg reduces your HP stat by 10 EVs, the Kelpsy is your attack by 10, Hondu is special attack, the Qualot is your defense, the Grepper is special defense, and the Tomato is speed. You can also receive these berries from Rax Raid Battles, but that isn't exactly very consistent, it's just a bonus when you do get them. But the method I'm about to show you involving the date change glitch is probably the quickest way to farm IV reducing berries in the game. So what you want to do is head to the bridge field area in the wild area as you can see on your screen now and head up this bank here where you will find this particular berry tree in the corner. Now this berry tree will give you only the IV reducing berries but you can only shake it once per day like we mentioned earlier. Now to get around this what you can do is use the date change max raid glitch to trick the game into thinking a day has passed to farm these berries over and over again so what you need to do is head down this bank and go straight across to this max raid den which is pretty close to the tree it's the closest one you can find to this tree it only requires one wishing piece so that's all you would need and this will be for an unlimited number of berries now once you've dropped your wishing piece into the den doesn't matter about the color of the beam as long as that beam appears doesn't matter about the pokemon you click into the den and then select invite others once the timer begins click your home menu go down to your settings go down to system settings into date turn off synchronized date with the internet and then knock the date forward one day then come back into the game and quit out of the raid now head back up to the tree because that method will have tricked the game into thinking a day has passed and once you're at the tree you're going to be able to shake it again and as the game thinks that day has passed you are now able to farm these berries and as I say after about an hour of doing this myself I ended up with a nice amount to help me out with the team building in future so hopefully this is a method that you can utilize in your games and you'll be able to farm at least a good amount of these EV berries now to finish this video we will look at the final method with how to EV train Pokemon in Sword and Shield, and that is through Poker Jobs. Now, Poker Jobs are a facility available at the Rotom computers at any Pokemon Center in the games. And once you have arrived at Hammerlock in your playthrough, the EV Poker Jobs will then be unlocked. For every hour a Pokemon is doing a job, you get four EVs. The game will not specifically tell you how much time you're sending your Pokemon away for, instead prompting you to send them to work for a short time or a very long time, but here are the translations with what they mean. So a little while equals one hour, which would be the equivalent of four EVs when it returns. Very short is two hours, which is eight EVs. Short is three hours, which equates to 12 EVs. Long is four hours, 16 EVs. Very long, eight hours, 32 EVs. Half a day is 12 hours with 48 EVs. And then a whole day is obviously 24 hours with 96 EVs given. Now, one good thing about Poker Jobs is that you can stack the EVs gained using this method with Pokerus and the power items. So if you send a particular Pokemon away for 24 hours, which is a whole day, with it holding a power item and Pokerus, it will max out that specific stat with 252 EVs when it is returned. And you can send up to 10 Pokemon away at one time on a specific job. And as you can see, I am sending Daramuka and Dreepy away for 24 hours, both with Pokerus and holding the Power Bracer, which is the attack boosting EV item. And as you can see, as one day has passed when they are returned, they both have 252 attack EVs given. This is a really nice method if you have a lot of time in your hands and you want to get on with other tasks and you want to just put Pokemon into the Pokemon jobs just to get EV'd. While a day passes, you can come back and then get them the next day. I think this is a really nice option especially when you can stack it with the power items and pokerus and along with poker jobs there is actually another method to exploit poker jobs through a max raid glitch once again and i have already done a previous video which you can actually go and see i'll link it in the top right hand corner of this video right now if you'd like to go over there you can ev up to 10 pokemon completely within about five minutes so my friends, that about does it and wraps up this EV training guide for you. I hope you've enjoyed the guide. And again, if you have, please remember to leave a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. And just a big thank you for tuning in. And I will see you all for another Pokemon guide very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.